So we have Orlando Zayas, the CEO of Catapult, joining us. So Catapult, omni-channel payment platform, going public with the SPAC FinServe Acquisition Corp, symbol FSRV. So Orlando, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thanks, Chris. I'm real excited to be here with you today. We got an unsolicited offer from a competitor. The board and I decided, you know, maybe we should look at, you know, what our, our options are for the business. And I always felt that, you know, probably in a couple of years, we would go public. We really liked the story that FinServe brought to us, obviously the valuation and uh, excited to do this and, and do it in a quick manner. I think it's, it's going to give us exposure to the retailers that we are working with now and future retailers, as well as to consumers about what we are, what we have to offer. Well, I, I think they looked at the market and the opportunity that we brought uh, because nobody was really focusing on the non-prime consumer and e-commerce. You know, they liked the management team. Uh, you know, they, they they really thought we brought the level of experience that needed uh, you know needed to take a company public. So they liked the growth story. They really liked the management team. And I think foremost, you know, one of the few SPACs or new SPACs that are profitable. We're, we've been profitable since the beginning of 2020. Our uh, partnership with Wayfair is phenomenal. You know, they obviously are e-commerce leader, you know, home goods and furniture. You know, we've been a partner with them since you know, the late 2018. The other one that we've had since 2017 is Lenovo. They've been an awesome partner with us. You know, I think they went through a transformation with us, realizing that the non-prime consumer on e-commerce was actually shopping on their website. We were able to capture incremental sales. And then last year, we signed an agreement with a firm as a partnership with a firm where we will go together to uh, retailers in what we call waterfalls. We are not on Peloton yet. Um, I'm hoping we will eventually. I think their price point is pretty high for where we focus. You know, I, I'm hoping that we can get in there and, and, and come up with some alternatives. For example, when a consumer leases with us, you know, at any time during the lease, they can return the item to us and, and basically discharge the debt. And so, you know, imagine if you had an installment loan for example, and you decided you wanted to return it, you'd still be stuck with that debt. But we also give them the option and the flexibility to get to ownership quickly. And so within 90 days of their lease, if they decide they want to buy out their lease, we only charge them 5%. It really is a great deal for the consumer. Give them the flexibility to pay it off as soon as they want to, or you know, continue to make those payments and maybe return the item eventually. I think five percent, five to ten percent market share is very uh, reachable. I think what we've built from an e-commerce perspective, you know, between our underwriting, our integrations with Shopify and other platforms, you know, we're able to get into merchants quickly and easily. But the best process is that that process that happens and get their lease completed within ninety seconds online, and it's all done because of our technology and our integrations with some of the you know, shopping platforms like Shopify. Just got to get out to those retailers and, and let them know we have this offer and bring this incremental customer to them. And I think it's it's going to be an easy build. I, well, it's a combination of everything, but, you know, we, we've got a pretty specific plan over the next, you know, year to two years, three years of how we're going to grow. And it really is you know, the small to medium-sized businesses that are offering durable goods that are on these platforms that we can get integrated and be in their shopping cart you know, literally within 30, 30 minutes, you know, a number of merchants, over 900 merchants where, you know, we think the waterfall works really well. And then there's, you know, the large retailers, you know, I think COVID taught a lot of big retailers a lesson that, you know, brick and mortar is, is it, you know, can, can suddenly shut down and you better be strong on e-commerce. We can help them bring that customer to e-commerce. We're generating a lot of cash right now, which is, you know, something I think that makes us again unique in the in the SPAC world right now. Um, we're going to look at, you know, how do we how do we allocate that cash? Do we return it to shareholders? Do we, you know, go out and buy something? And I think there's there's a number of ways we can do it. I think it's just going to depend on how much cash we build up and how, how fast our growth is. But I think, you know, the sky's the limit as far as what we can do with that cash. You know, I, I like the idea of, of maybe some interesting M&A especially from a technology perspective, whether it's a shopping platform or something interesting like that. You know, I liked what was built around the machine learning and, and AI about how we underwrite consumers and really about the integration and the, you know, and how you interact with consumers. And it's got to be fast. It's got to be easy. With Catapult, it's very similar to the Affirm applications with only a few fields. Our models have been developed to understand the e-commerce consumer we have to get a, a small amount of information and make a decision very fast. Yeah, it would probably be parallel businesses. I mean, I think what we've uncovered and, and what we do is is really, um, you know, e-commerce. You know, the power of the non-prime consumer giving them the same choices that 
um, you know, prime customers have. And, and that's something that they've been overlooked in the past. And so, you know, are there other products, other technologies that we can buy um, that really fit into that theme? I want to stay in the non-prime. I want to, um, you know, make sure that it's easy, simple, and that we open access to these consumers to other products that, you know, they're, they're struggling to get. And it's been an amazing change. And I think where people before were not used to shopping online, just because it was easy to go to their store, suddenly they had to. But I think it changed behaviors. And so I don't think when the stores open up that it's going to change anything. There's, they now see the options, the choice, you know, you can shop the price, you can do a lot of things online that you can't do at the store. And you're making that decision. You don't have a salesperson there, you know, trying to hammer you into it. We're actually in the process of filing with the SEC, the you know S four. Hopefully, that'll be done shortly. Um, you know, we're targeting you know, early second quarter at this point. Um, you know, who knows? Yeah, you know, we hear that there's a lot of deals going on, and the SEC is backed up. I think that's going to be part of it. Um, but you know, with the stock price where it's at, um, you know, the investors that we've talked to, I've been on the road show for the last two months, um, and you know, we've got some pretty good excitement going on with some big investors. Um, and so we want to get this done as quick as possible.